Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Capital. And uh, we're going to check out a town hall here in an all-American city here, Dearborn Heights. We're at Annapolis High School on a Wednesday evening. The sun is about to set out yonder. Nice park with the ball field out here. The cars are queued up for this town hall on Ecourse Creek. So we have Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Debbie Dingle hosting this meeting. There are some email addresses there on the bottom. So, yeah, Ecourse Creek has been in the news. Every time it rains, it seems like uh, the Ecourse Creek is in the news. Now, I don't know if the city logo has changed or not. Um, I can show you one on my trash can that looks a little different than that one. Anyways, if you miss that college night, maybe they'll reschedule another one. We're in district number seven. And it looks like 1966. And it's the Annapolis Cougars. And you've heard follow the yellow brick road, but here we'll follow the red brick road to their theater. And we're getting ready to begin. Here's Rashida Tlaib. Invitations to folks in Melvindale, Ecors, River Rouge, and Inkster, and others that have been impacted by uh, so much of the flooding. Uh, it's important because a lot of the folks that are here um, are, you know, some even came, coming as far as Washington, D.C., and others are the ones that have to, as, as I'm calling on your behalf, are the ones who can answer a lot of our questions today. Um, I'm your Congresswoman, Rashida Tlaib. I've been representing you for the last year. I want to thank you all so much for the honor of that. Um, we do have four neighborhood service centers that my district director, Larissa Richardson, if she can just wave. Is, and then I reached out to the mayor, who has just an expansive knowledge about the processes from FEMA and so forth. And one of the things uh, I know is that uh, John Dingle was a great advocate on the federal level, and he really tried to, to um, walk us through that process. So with that, I'm going to have Mayor um, Paletko come and talk a little bit about I'm going to give you a brief history some of you have lived through this so you know but there's probably items you don't know and when i get to the end you're going to see where it is extremely important that we have that congressional support and the army corps of engineers and fema uh, shortly after i became mayor in may of 2004 we had this massive flood and the president had declared it a disaster area what we did as a city, because this has been an ongoing problem for years and years and years, is that there's something called, uh, up in Lansing, a, a certain degree of bills that deal with agricultural needs. Up and said, we have a solution and it's $239 million. Well, the county kind of gagged at that and nothing was going on. And then we filed a suit in Wayne County Circuit Court, we said, well, under the law, the county has to fix this. That's why we went through the Board of Determination. Well, Wayne County came back to the city and said, what if we get the Army Corps of Engineers and the federal government involved, because they'll pay 65 cents on the dollar in support if they adopt it as their project. Well, the city obviously was going to say, if we can get help for funding, we're in agreement. But we continued Senator Carl Levitt, and he was on the Armed Services Committee, and he got us a ton of money to do all the studies, and I think he was doing a lot of lobbying with the Army Corps of Engineers to get Dearborn Heights taken care of. Unfortunately, Senator Carl Levin didn't run for re-election, and that was a, a difficult problem. And it uh, continues today. One of the things that we elected to do, and I think they'll talk about it further, is incorporated in the overall solution was the retention basin and some uh, flood drainage work between Inkster and Telegraph. And 
in order to at least get some relief. Because this, I started working on this thing in 2004. That's, 12, that's 16 years ago. And it takes so long for these projects to get to, get to a, a finalization. So we said, and the Detroit Army Corps said, you know, we could probably and, and self-fund a retention basin and some work along that parameter. Well, something is better than nothing. And we said we would be receptive to going ahead and do that. One of the real uh, good things about it is the city owns that where the incinerator used to be. So there is not a problem in having to buy it and do all these other things. It's right there. So that, that's kind of where we are at right now. The only other thing, since I'm up here, I'll just mention, we got a second grant for purchasing some homes through FEMA, and I think FEMA is here. But I'm going to ask both of the congresswomen if they can help us. Because the first grant we received we were, uh, was much better for the occupants of the home than the current one. So if, I'm going to ask them if they can get FEMA to relieve some of these issues because one of the short, I mean, I am short, I'm short, I'm going to be short. Uh, because I, I re we really want to hear from the experts. I want to thank Rashida for really taking the lead on putting this together. And Dearborn Heights it obviously is a community that has had a, a lot of flooding and both Rashida and I have seen it know what the, dam the damage and the trauma is. But it is not only Dearborn Heights that suffers from flooding uh, with the Eucorse Creek. So we invited all of the communities that the Eucorse Creek uh, flows through or causes flooding for. I was with somebody today uh, who told me their basement floods every five years uh, in, from Lincoln Park. And Frank Liberati, who I know is trying to get here at legislature because they weren't out, uh, were you guys, the, the, how, but they had, uh, their heat went out last week, your heat went out. So, uh, but Frank's expert, we are advocates for you. And we're trying to get solutions. So, it's great to see this kind of turnout. Thank you, all of you. Thank you for coming in from Washington. Thanks to all the local officials I see here who hear as much as we do about it, and we look forward to hearing from the experts. Thank you, Rashida. All right, so I do want to acknowledge uh, all the status of where we are with the Army Corps project that the, that the mayor uh, mentioned earlier. So, um, this is just our basic outline of what I'm going to go through. It's probably going to only take 10, 15 minutes at the most. We want to make sure we allow questions for everybody. So to give you a background, environmentally acceptable, technically feasible, and economically justified. Everything from bank erosion, sediment, nutrient loading, you know, trash, debris loading. Um, so what we're really trying to do is find opportunities to, in essence, fix these problems for the community. Powers Avenue and Inkster Road, um, this is where the, the detention basin would be placed, or, or would, be, would be constructed, I should say. Oh, and later in this show, we'll check this out, the property around here. This, this will help. And the storage capacity is about 250 acre feet. Uh, the, the whole idea behind it is, is you have the flood, the flood flows obviously moved down the Ecorse Creek, and in that time, they're intercepted by the, uh, by the inlet box culvert you see there, and then it basically gets uh, a flood inundation map. So what, what we're trying to highlight here is the existing condition of what's going on right now for those, those two-year and five-year events. Uh, so you can see at the top is your existing condition, and the, the bottom is the with project condition. So uh, you, can, you can see the blue is obviously not what you want to see, and below is with the project, how it's going to be. So it, we have a very strong project here, um, so once we put in our budget request to move into design phase, 
uh, it, it, it should compete very, very well to get funding into, in, into design. So what happens after that is we get what's called... Uh, uh, then we get down to the brass tacks the uh, construction, sponsor, and you see case. there on the bottom Based line, Creek, June of 2025 uh, to October uh, so of 2026. We so uh, we got then, five years uh, to go here yet. We'll you know, the government has to... to uh, Dot their eyes and cross yeah. their teeth. So I, I, there, there isn't, there isn't a whole lot that I, I can, I can tell you right now. That's, that's going to make a whole lot of difference. So that, that, that's basically all I had to, uh, have, have, have to. That's all I have to say. Even after the construction, right, Nicholas? Correct. There are still, it alleviates a lot, but the flooding is still going to occur. So, uh, with that, I would like you to come up and do your presentation. <laughs> um. I'm the guy from FEMA that's here. So just by way of introduction, my name is James Joseph. I'm actually not from DC, my apologies uh, for the miscommunication earlier. I'm from our regional office in Chicago. I'm the administrator for the Midwest, and we have oversight of six states in the upper Midwest, Michigan being one of them. Is number one, what are some of the things that you could be doing in the meantime from a, a self uh, readiness perspective? And then number two, I wanna talk about fact and fiction between what the FEMA programs do and don't do and what they can and can't do. Now, here's what I do not want to do, right? I, I, I'm not going to stand here and do that to you. But what I can tell you is there are some things uh, that we always talk about on preparedness, that we always talk about on insurance, and that we always uh, try to dispel fact versus fiction on, on what the FEMA programs can actually do. That fell on the Houston area. Those that did not have flood insurance and relied solely on FEMA and the federal government received between $2,500 and $5,000. Those that had flood insurance received on average $150 to $160,000. Which is why a lot of people look at me and say, you make no sense when you talk about flood insurance, and insurance is not the only key, but that is the first and most important step when it comes to individual preparedness and... Here, please line up um, and, and please ask any questions that you have. Um, and I know many of you will have comments. Those are welcome, but if you can somehow put a question into the comments. Okay, okay. oh, there I am. Hi, um, good evening everyone. My name is Lisa Hicks Clayton. I am a Dearborn Heights City Council member. I'm also honored to be the community liaison for State Senator Medicine Alexander. And because of that, and thank you, uh, Congressman Tilly, for mentioning, when we sat down, that was one of the first things I talked about. We haven't left you alone, right? I call you closer than we've ever been. We've been talking about this amendment since 2004. So it's good. That's the two floods. My question is, uh, the Department of Engineers, about, I had to live with that uh, big pond you're making. What's the, the impact study of uh, soil samples there right now? Is there lead? Is there mercury? From uh, them uh, doing stuff in that big pit. You're, you're addressing the detention basin that we yeah. have to use. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, so. Of this, we do uh, environmental investigations. So, we we've done those. We've investigated the site to make sure it's clean. So, and as we move into design, we would do further sampling before we break ground to ensure that if there's any concerns with the soils that they were mediated. Central Lake County Sanitation Authority, and they remediated the area. There's a hot spot in one area, we're aware of it, but should not impact this particular thing. We, the Sugar <coughs> Authority and the city of one of five communities paid a lot of money to have that soil removed so that it was environmentally clean. Thank you. Occurred here at Annapolis High School with Mayor John Canfield on stage. Since I lived in South Dearborn Heights, a lot of development. Will anything be done at the airport, or can the airport authority uh, build retention ponds to help the flooding problem? Yeah. There you go. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, 
Uh, so out by the airport, that actually drains south into the Sexton Kilvoyne drain. It does not come north into the Ecorse Creek drain. Uh, he was saying there that uh, none of the uh, rainwater off of the airport grounds makes it to Ecorse Creek. Now, uh, there might be some debate on that. In two years, I've had four floods. So I woke up twice with water up to my kitchen. Everything's messed up, structurally and everything. Even with flood insurance, you know how much I have to pay every time? $10,000. They want $10,000 for flood insurance for me to get that kind of coverage. Now, who do you think got that kind of rainy day for? Who do you think can wait two years? When we just had a flood, just had a flood, even with everything we have, boarding up. Uh, I live here in Dearborn Heights, I've dealt with several floods myself. Um, actually, kind of a simple question. Um, why aren't we damming it at the Detroit River and using the e-course as a base? Could you, could you repeat that? Why aren't we 60 yeah. years? When I was younger, my parents never had to pay flood insurance. Why do we, the government, force us to have flood insurance. There are benefits of living in an area where you're living near the water because when it's not flooding, it's a nice place to live. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I have never, I know, I have, my street is one of the first ones and the last ones that uh, the water goes down. And I've never used any of my flood insurance, my my insurance company said... My name is Lieutenant Nate McQueen from the Michigan State Police Emergency Management Homeland Security Division. I am your two South coordinator. Basically, all that said, in short terms, I am your liaison back to the governor's office and through my boss, uh, the deputy. Before ground would be broken, before construction would actually take place, Michigan has a, a division called EGLE. Formerly, many of you may have known them as DEQ. Prior to any ground being broken, EGLE would have to either make sure with their individuals who come out and their physicists to make sure that yeah they're uh, checking on the green ooze in madison heights so this eagle they're on top of things doing the construction had paperwork showing that testing had been done and that they police 30 years i didn't know there is actually a division within the state of michigan it's the damn division no pun intended <laughs> And that's what, and because there are a plethora of dams throughout the entire state of Michigan, from the Upper Peninsula all the way down here to where we reside, because I live down here too. I live in Redford, and there are dams. Eight miles of that creek because it cuts from Wayne County. I lost eight feet in eight years from my fence to the to the creek. The county says my property line is actually in the middle of that creek. <laughs> You can now see the fence poles of my fence, where I used to have eight feet eight years ago. Who's going to fix that? And help the city of Dearborn Heights move branches from the uh, north end of the Equals Creek. And I'm from Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Our job is response and recovery. We set up the multi-agency resource center, along with our partners, the state of Michigan, who were very instrumental and helped to provide us with the materials to help you clean out your basements and so forth. Also for Wayne County, I mean, five years of yes. yes. seen him three times to come out and clean that damn thing. The creek is my backyard. It's from here to where he's at. That's how close that water is to my house. To come walking down my street when I flood after the water's got, gone down. Yep. I need to, all of you to come out and walk on my street with your waders on and your rubber boots and try to get down in my basement and go get me something that I need. That's what I need all you people to do.
my, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little disappointed in this particular project, and I'll tell you why. We've been waiting on something like this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then, you know, and I'm not an expert in this particular field, but looking at this thing, to not even start for another five years, and then on top of that, not be a permanent solution. I mean, I'm looking at just a drawing alone, and you've got, you know, continuous flooding that will continue to come through. And in addition to that, well, we've heard that, you know, at the, at the council chambers on a regular basis that the cost for fixing this is going to be anywhere between 230 million all the way up to as high as 380 million. So at this particular point, obviously at the local level, which would be at the city level, we don't have enough funding to be able to fund something like that. But we've been hearing forever and ever and ever that this cannot be resolved because it's going to be at a cost of 230 million all the way up to 380 million. I've heard those types of numbers. Wire is it involves a lot of real estate acquisition and a lot of basically basically moving people out of the way of the floodplain. And so, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so that's that's where the where the root of the cause is, and the root of the cost is is all of basically all the real estate acquisition. To, to the solution by the Army Corps of Engineers. What is the status of that particular project, and why can't we get that? Instituted and get an ultimate solution. 2004, 2000, the last three floods and the last two I have replaced a lot of things, so you don't need your my tail of woe. But what I precipitation on the Great Lakes, and that's really what the root of the, root of the issue is. Over the past five years, we've gotten more rain and precip. Uh, than we have in the past hundred years. So it's 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 really been a very wet. Uh, uh, period in Port Authority, but I've been to those retention areas just to myself and Director Sturdivant um, uh, from Homeland Security Emergency Management. There are six retention ponds, and they've never gone over since the pond, the last pond was built. So these gates that they talk about, I, I, I don't know of them, but I've heard rumors of them that they don't exist. There are six retention ponds, just so you know, at Metro Airport. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bob Hodgkins. I'm with Dearborn Heights, ready to go. Right, so so every project that we work on competes nationally for funds. And like I mentioned, the ones that have the highest benefit cost ratio are the ones that most right. are most likely to be funded. So with that being said, my question is to <coughs> Congresswoman Dingwood's lead. What could we do to get an infrastructure bill passed so that people yeah, stop so having to... Yeah, so it's not in the infrastructure bill. It is in the appropriations bill, I believe. And it's so the same, no, 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 I just, let me finish. Yeah. So the whole point of them coming here is so that I can advocate, and they know this, they've been on a conference call with me. I said, how do we become more competitive? How do we, so they did the study and everything. Don't think that we're not gonna continue advocating, picking up and saying, what's going on with the, the, the proposal that has been put forward about eCourse Creek? What I want you to know is the appropriations levels we don't think are gonna change as they go through the process. And we're going through, the, our application is approved. There is no, they have to tell you there's no guarantee, of course, of course. But it doesn't mean that this is not helping in making sure the Army Corps of Engineers go to their officials back home and say, we came to an event and it's very clear that this is a critical issue to this community. And so, absolutely. Infrastructure bill is on its way. Uh, trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm working, actually, speaker event with the speaker's office and, and one of them is around water infrastructure, but it's really around, I'm really working. And I'm not, I'm not saying that is the permanent fix. But trust me, you think I don't like band-aids because these are years that I can't get back for you, all of you. You know this. These are years I cannot get back for our residents. These are time away from your family, everything. You know what this does to your family when you get a flooding. It's, it's, you completely feel helpless. And, and it's nothing you can do to cover it. But it is Mother Nature in a sense that this is also about a bigger issue in our country and in the world about climate. And that's something we need to understand. Detroit River, my district goes all the way from the east side of Detroit, y'all. All the way here. Do you know what I hear out of folks that are living literally on the church? The canals, they've never seen flooding, ever. And we're sitting there begging people to come volunteer so we can put sandbags along their, the canals over there. And you know I've been hearing talking to you, and I said, come down and see what's happening also on the east side of these, of these, these folks that are literally seeing the highest levels in the Detroit River. They've never seen these kinds of levels before, ever. First off, how many of us have more just of hot water being in a furnace in the basement? And then it says something about you get coverage for your money.
There are hallway expectations. Be respectful. Be responsible. And for heaven's sakes, be safe. And then they had uh, an XY graph there. I don't, with Christmas trees, I don't gather what that's all about, but it looks like they still had Christmas things going on here in February. They have the Crossroads Cafe and then a hoop coming 2020. And this was during the week, a three day event. But a lot of, it's, it's a nice, good question and answer period. And for the record, I said I had never smoked and didn't plan on doing it, but I had fun. Okay. <laughs> the, the second thing that Debbie and I have in common is that uh, I ran against her husband, a great guy, back in 1996 as a libertarian. Does this have anything to do with flooding? Yeah, yeah well, it does. It, 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 we'll, we'll get to the G radiation, because she's out. She's out. Oh, yeah. Oh, they allowed me a 40-minute session to educate the people of Dearborn Heights. Nobody wants to answer it. She's on the caucus. She's before 5G. And this radiation is going to harm us. I have a medical degree. I work... Well, the face and whole block, what I'm staying talking about will be stagnant faceless, or will it still have a flow like the river does? The other question I got is, you know, why is it that we ain't considering going through and dredging the creek out. Yeah! Bank it in the bags and bank it up. And that way you got the west side of Telegraph. We're going to switch back over to Courier. And I was kind of curious about that because it's like, you know, you already tore down three, four houses there in Hanover. You know, it's starting to look like a war zone. And then you're going to switch to Courier. So there's my question. I mean, we've looked at slope widening, so actually taking material out of, of the, uh, the channel itself. So we have looked at it in, in, in a different way. So as far as remediating, remediating it, remediating the actual creek to, uh, to, to actually alleviate the problem. So. A member of a city council or a mayor should have the sole last word of, do we use this grant or not? Belongs to the people. Belongs to the people of the city of Denver with the funding correct mechanism. and I'd like to have that same information so send now the, the funding I will I will send to whomever and it'll probably be someone from my team that sends it we don't make the decision correct. about where the buyout happens correct that yeah. happens between the city yep. and the homeowner I understand that but the information yeah. you pass along in less than five years you look at the city of Detroit and look at Hiroshima who got hit with the bomb we did and, and you know I thank the councilman uh, Dave Abdullah for bringing that up. I mean, this is still... We, we have the right technical experts in, um, able to look at the design um, while, while making risk-informed decisions as to where we can work within the gray area to move faster and not just adhere to all, all the policy, all the statutes. 14 flood and then uh, the really cute flood was kind of isolated in my area. Um, we had a giant sewer back up in just my house on Christmas Eve, that was a fun time. Um, I wanted to, actually before I like started, when I was standing here, um, like what's the next step for, you know, for here? Because these five year storms seem to be coming every two or three years. So I'm just curious to what like you guys would plan to do. All of you, our congressionals, to look at how do we fund it? Um, and how do we move forward? You can just back it out, pay out your mortgage. They need their money back. You guys did not use it toward the property. The only question through administration, Danielle Polacco only. If I might respond, but that was uh, my letter to both the congresswomen, and you've given me information. We want some clarification. We're hoping that the grant can be administered in a similar fashion that the first grant was. And that's what we intend to do. I think that first grant was very successful, and I, we we are hoping for a successful second grant. But we do hope that we can get the changes we'd like are beneficial to the residents. Thank you.
So well, if you so stay out of Because he got that grant before he didn't qualify for this grant, is that what's happening? No, ma'am. Let me explain it real quick. No, I, I'm not the only one. I, I do want clarification. Do you guys know what uh, it's, it's not true. And the fact of the matter is, as I brought up grant, and we hope we can make some modifications that would benefit, benefit all the rest of us. For four years. My back door has not opened in three years. My front, I keep them on my porch. I'm very happy the city hasn't ticketed me. The ordinance officer came by one day and threatened to, and I told him, until you guys solve the flooding problem, I'm leaving the sandbags there. So they yeah. sit right next to my door. But, but so I'm, I'm actually going to say thank you to FEMA. Thank you to the Army Corps of Engineers. I know we've been beating you guys up. You guys are trying. You guys aren't causing the rain. You guys didn't cause this problem. I'm not happy with the, this, this solution, uh, but it's, it's something. FEMA's been quality of our water. I looked at your web page. I look at it all the time. There is nothing to do with this. It's your primary issue. You have five issues. This is not one of them. That's Please true. tell me that it can be number six. Yeah, no. I and, and, but, so I'm on House Financial Services, and literally all, I was just telling her, Chairwoman Maxine Waters, and I talk about the flood mapping. Okay. That's the first thing. If you read my editorial, it was about flood mapping. And the fact that the I have issues with the uh, National Insurance Board reelected and coming no, back. No, you know what I care about is putting my head on the pillow. No, I'm being. She knows. I you. She I knows. Believe you. I believe. But, sir, I will not turn my back and not holding the president accountable. And sure enough, I may have said it. But, but, sir, you should know I have four neighborhood service centers. No other. You ask any member of Congress across this country. That we provide the strongest constituent services programs. I don't advertise about getting people's college debt paid off if they're veterans. I don't advertise about the Social Security benefits I get people that get denied the first time or the VA literally appeals up the, up the wazoo of folks. However, I cannot control the media. I'm going to say it again. I cannot control the media. The first bill I ever passed on the House floor is where your, your debt on your report right now is seven years. I got it down to four years through this bill. So, in medically necessary debt. Now, did I get on CNN and Fox for that? No. They don't care about that. They care when I got a bit of a potty mouth or if I'm going after the biggest bully in our history. So, but I want you to know, literally 221 of my colleagues supported this bill and I got it through the House. In medically necessary debt, all of you, you go to the ER, you go to the doctor, surprise billing. It happens to my, they call and they're so, they're in tears about it. Medically necessary debt cannot get on your get on your uh, credit history report for at least 365 days. I got another bill that doesn't even allow them to put it on at all. Majority of my bills, the first ones, were auto insurance. No, but this is an answer. Auto insurance. But it's not I about flood insurance. Over a dozen people to support me on this. What about, about the floods? Now, nobody cares I even said about the impeachment, I wasn't questioning it. No, what I'm but, saying is, I'm you said you tonight, yes. Congresswoman, you said tonight, when somebody brought up about federal funding, you said, well, I'm really concerned about the quality of our work, water. That's your word tonight. That's what I was calling you out for saying. Oh, you I said see. tonight about quality. Well, sir, so, what I'm talking, talking about, about is infrastructure bill. When that's it comes through, this is not in the infrastructure bill. Well, that was, that's my point. It's not saying, in there. Why can it not be? The, it, you, okay, okay, move on. It doesn't mean, Congresswoman, I'm telling you right now, the biggest crisis in our country is water quality. I have 60 out of 80 schools in Detroit public schools right now that can't open their fountains. But that's not our problem right it. now. So what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm going to be honest with you because I'm not going to overpromise. What I'm telling you is they know this. One of the first calls I ever put together was with the Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. And I said to them, this is an important issue. And this is not going to say that this is not a priority. We are here because I do actually care about you having homes that are safe. I do. All right, and I don't think you guys realize. You may hear me beating the drum on Trump, but these folks know I beat the drum all the time, calling them and saying this is a priority issue for my residents. And every single time there's a flooding, Mayor Pletko knows. I call and say, what's going on with my neighbors in Dearborn Heights? What can I do? So I just want, and, but I call city council members too. But I just want you all to know more work and advocacy on the city level, but also on the state level and the county level. We cannot stop. But you all being here means and shows to my colleagues that I call that this is an important issue to all of us. But yes, 
water infrastructure as it comes through, I have to realize the number one issue that I'm hearing is people don't feel like their water is clean and safe to drink. Thank you. Then they were going to put a culvert, the whole length of it. It would be 20 feet deep in the ground. It would handle everything that would ever come down our way. Well, now it can't handle it because the lakes are all at high levels. Ecorse Creek can't drain. Guess what? We're going to be in for another flood, and it's coming. And I don't want to be in that house when it happens, because I told my wife, the next time it's floods, I'm living up north, because i got a beautiful place up there in Oscar. I feel that that water uh, uh, goes into our storm drains instead of going into the ground. Okay, so, so is this a permanent solution? No, but this is some real solutions, some real money. I don't know if you... Um, Katie and um, uh, Larissa will be here um, if you guys have any specific questions. If folks have specific cases that they just don't want to bring forward to the mics, please just come and talk to us directly. Uh, a lot of folks, I mean, I know my mom, she doesn't like going up to a mic. So if you want to come directly to one of us and tell us about some of the current situation that you might go through, please do that. And again, thank you all so much for spending the evening with us. Thank you. I just want to say something as we end. we got to work together. And I know everybody's frustrated. I'm sitting here talking to Rashida. I can't even get insurance for my, because I'm not in the floodplain and my insurance company won't. It, we got to work together. We got to stop this fear and hatred in this country. I talk to Rashida. I talk to her every goddamn day, and I swear more since I started talking to her every day. But I do. You got to know, she really cares. She's the one that said we got to get people together. We got to get, and we have Corps of Engineer meetings, and we yell at them. They're tired of us yelling at them. And if you notice, FEMA came right over to me. We are talking to them. We're not going to, God damn it, we're not going to give up till we get this problem fixed. And no, we're fighting for you. And Rashida's fighting for you. So we'll keep getting it, we'll keep working to get it done. Then I give you our word. Oh, that's the spirit. I think this sign means uh, thanks for attending the meeting. Have a nice uh, day. All right, so this was Annapolis High School, and they like to be their best. Yeah, quite a, a big crowd here attending this meeting. And uh, DET.com is the website. But yeah, this was kind of a local event, Ecorse Creek, whatever, in my neck of the woods. I live in Dearborn Heights on Lehigh Street. Oh, Lemon Ups. These are great. They're crispy lemon cookies baked with inspiring messages. And I am a go-getter. <laughs> yes, I am. How about it? Yeah, so I, I got a couple of those things. And now... I drained the uh, the half gallon bottle, so I got a refill. Oh yeah, that's my treat. Is that chocolate milk? Do it in moderation. Well, I was in River Rouge. This is the home of the Panthers, and they have a hell of a football team, a hell of a band, and a hell of a basketball team. All right, so we're in the hood. In, uh, in my hood right now, actually the kitchen, I'm looking through the kitchen window, but I'm going to take a look at this retention pond. It's on the western edge of Dearborn Heights between Powers and Annapolis and just east of Inkster. And I'm following the Ecorse River. I'm going to check where the airport and how this drains, so I'm going to follow the Ecorse River uh, backwards and kind of trace it here because I'm not quite so sure now they say a couple of these drains will take the airport drainage across through Taylor so there's one drain there and then there's another one uh, south of North Line and I'm not so sure that uh, all that is taken up by those I think some 
of that water is being pumped and it makes it up into the Ecorse Creek. Just my imagination or just a guess, I don't know. Okay, so the Ecorse River kind of follows Van Born there uh, and then crosses uh, uh, Southfield and goes into Allen Park. But Al um, Lincoln Park is affected. Then it goes to this place here, this point, Council Point Park. It's called the Ecorse River here, and then it feeds into uh, the Detroit River just south of uh, Mud Island. All right. So I'm going to take a peek here. And there's a lot of vegetative growth and so forth. And uh, the water's not, it looks pretty clear, but a lot of people throw trash. We've got to work on that a little bit. So Van Bourne Road, uh, just north of I-94. Uh, the first assembly of God is over here, but this is the go-to spot when the news crews want to get a shot of the flooding in the local area. They cover this, 2, 4, and 7. This is a big pond out here. I'm on high ground there, uh, but that's where the news crews park their van. Looks like they might have tore a couple houses down there. Uh, but you see trash, and that's never good. When people, th yeah, it's like your evil twin is doing that. Um, that's never good when people uh, feel like a, a, a river or creek is just a, a waste depository. Well, we're going to check out the plains. It was a beautiful day here this Sunday afternoon, February 23rd. I think that's where we lived there, 24083. I'm going to have to verify, but when I was a kid from 1960 to 1966, lived on Hanover Street. My dad worked at Ford Motor Company, and uh, I remember this bridge across the creek right here from Hanover to Courier Street. I had, like, nursery school or whatever. Uh, for one year and then I went to St. Martha for elementary school a Catholic place but here's the creek here and then there was a gentleman at the meeting that mentioned the shopping cart it's and there it is it's been here for a while uh, so that might be on a bucket list of things to do maybe my evil twin will get off his lazy ass and drag that out of there but I didn't have good shoes right at the moment here, uh, look at the, uh, the logo for Dearborn Heights. The, the mom's got quite the figure, but two kids, yeah, it was on the waist thing. Okay, now I went to the east side of Telegraph, and we're going to look at a spot here between Madison and Grinley Park where they took down, I believe it was nine homes. They got a FEMA grant because of the continuous flooding over here. Uh, the residents got bought out, and they literally just tore their homes down, and uh, it's a vacant property. Now, they could do a retention basin here or extend it out a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, they got some, like, bricks. Some people do some things on the side here. I don't know if this really helps or not. On the bank there, uh, the Rouge River has that concrete river bank. And I'm not sure if that's working out for them over there or not. This is an area probably, I think they just tore these homes down in 2019. And uh, off in the distance, a couple guys shooting some hoop it was a beautiful sunny day here close or around 50 degrees but yeah they could could have made a retention basin here a little bit i sk skedaddled a bunch of birds around but they were out floating about and uh, they went off in two different directions but you can see the proximity of several homes to the creek And 
I'm wondering with the underbrush here, you're, they were talking a little bit about dams. There's some natural dams here just because they got to clean all the underbrush here. Um, and the trash, why people feel they can just dispose of their uh, pop bottles and whatnot uh, is beyond me. That's parents. Parents got to teach their kids right. And maybe it's the parents that are the the problem children, actually. Here the water does escape through here, but yeah, I think beavers would be proud of some of the dams that are put up here. So if you're talking about the Army Corps of Engineer, I mean, they have their plan, and, you know, the master plan is like, to do it right is like $238 million, right? Oops, I got to switch tapes. Okay. Uh, hang in there. Grab a beer or something. This kind of urban planning or suburban planning is kind of boring, I'm sure. But if it affects you, it, it does kind of make a difference. So people don't. But it could be any river plain that has flooding. Here's gas prices pretty moderate here 227 i can deal with that okay gully and van born this is real close to, i live between gully and telegraph this place is available talking about suburban planning it's been available for a while this is uh, a tavern a place where good friends hang out and yeah it can be had and it's backyard is right here at the creek I don't know if we have these kind of pelican things around but it's the north branch of Ecorse Creek and I always monitor this usually when we're in big trouble this creek is uh, up to the top there and spilling over at times people throwing their trash and the like and even their jewelry God, that's probably silver. Wow. But yeah, that's not good when people throw trash. That's yeah, shame on those people, right? Being a litter bug's not good. Now we see a bunch of these drains. I'm just checking this out. This this is gonna run until the top of the hour. We'll look at the Ecorse Creek. It'll bore you to tears. But I'm trying to figure out uh why the problem is so prevalent all the time here are the paint can this place is for sale also um, but it's got a nice paint can out front kerns they're looking for people so their backyard is the creek and you get the great entrance for these planes making the approach to detroit metro storm ready community be prepared yeah and as it is, you got to be prepared like every couple of years. Like every time they say it rains like more than two inches, you have to be prepared because this creek doesn't seem to be able to handle more than two inches at a time. And that's why a lot of people are concerned that the, uh, the airport uh, might be dumping water. Uh, then I wonder about this... Uh, deposit here we had that green ooze in madison heights we got kind of some yellowish slime there whether that's just like a calcium thing or whatnot or i don't know but there's some storm drains that certainly will empty into the creek so looking north on beach daily this is the central business district all right now i'm going to move over to closer to inkster so i'm backtracking the 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 creek here okay now i made it to inkster road and westland is the other side over there and this place here is for sale jesus auto repair wow you don't like to see that happen jesus couldn't make a go of it apparently but here the the underbrush and so forth. I wonder if cleaning some of that vegetation would help um, clear things out. Spirit has those yellow planes now. So against the backdrop of the blue sky, it looks pretty good. Department of Water Supply. 
All right, well, let's look at the map again. I want to see where this water retention pond is going to be. So it's going to be north of Powers, and 194, it shows a school. Well, it's no longer a school, it's a church, but here uh powers in wellington here was what was a school now it's the champion church and they could actually buy this out also this property and make the retention pond a little bit bigger now just the retention pond is a 23 million dollar project it's not that full 238 million permanent fix this is just Kind of like a Band-Aid on the deal. But for $23 million, you almost think Wayne County could pull this off by themselves. But they want I can understand you want to get government mon money, but... Okay, here's looking where the, the pipes would feed into the retention pond. That's a low spot right there, too, uh, the, in the school. So anyways, there would be a, an inlet into the retention pond... And then an outlet. So the inlet would be right near where this business was, that global. The water looks pretty clear. I'm impressed. I, I, I like that. But all this underbrush, geez, if the Army Corps of Engineers or even our military could come in and um, instead of blowing up stuff, you know, clear the way, make things better for the citizens. Yeah. Maybe not the best of jobs, but it would be much appreciated. There's a Delta plane. Um, and here, it's already like a water retention pond in this area. I walked out back here. The, the incinerator was back behind that fence, but you can see the water around here. Um... So just quite naturally, it's kind of got a pond on its own. This back here is Hazel Street. So I'm walking north up to Annapolis. And I'm just... Yeah, we had a waste incinerator in Dearborn Heights. I don't know exactly when it closed. Uh, there was some concerns at the meeting as to whether there would be some toxic chemicals... Uh, and they said there was one hot spot, but that might have been mitigated. Central Wayne Energy Recovery Facility. That was what it officially was called. So they have their area fenced off. So just north of Annapolis is the city of Inkster. And we see the city limits sign here. They got the water wheel and a tree. They were established 1923. And uh, back in 2015, Geraldine Talley, she was the oldest citizen. Good for her. Um, then just north of here, it becomes the Rouge River watershed. So instead of the Ecorse Creek, there must have been a little hump in the road or something. That one dr will drain into the, the Rouge River just north. So the Inkster Housing Commission's over here, and this is... Um, I don't know if they still call it uh, Little Saigon, but it's kind of like the war zone area. Um, but it's uh, they have subsidized housing and so forth. I don't know if it's as bad as it, it's, it once was. There's different forms of housing. There's double levels there. Now, they blocked off some of the streets with these posts. At times, there were drug issues, and I guess the in and out um, was was an issue, so they blocked off a lot of that. Okay, so in Westlands nearby here, so Inkster, Dearborn Heights, and Westland, all part of this area. Westland established in 1966. Yeah, that's where the waste facility was the incinerator and thankfully in the city of detroit they uh stopped that incinerator so this was what i would believe was the entrance to the facility and that would have been the guard shack area i'm just doing a little detective work here so that road would have led to the incinerator i presume 
And uh, as the planes make their approach, I'm a little kid at heart. I could watch planes all day. No trespassing. The central Wayne recovery facility or whatnot. So this church might stay there. I would say buy them out and then use all... Use as much land as you can because they, they could use more retention ponds. And in fact, the airport, the guy mentioned there were six retention ponds. I don't know if you heard that. Maybe at about the 10-minute mark or something. But they could use more retention ponds than that. Uh, there's a lot of water runoff from the airport. But we all know the airport is the sacred cow. By all means, you do everything in your power to keep that airport up and running. Here is where the Ecorse Creek crosses um, Van Bourne Road. So it crosses through here. A nice, you see another drain here. Um, and it's clear of the underbrush and stuff so nice flow through here and I want to monitor this now the phone is actually better I'll see where it crosses over at Beverly Road here I'm backtracking and, and look how clear this is and rather shallow at this moment but I want to check when we have another big storm run out and check and just see <laughs> where it is and so forth. I keep seeing these entrance valves uh, or drains to feed this and the pollution's not good. Not good at all. You need to work on that. That Everybody has to be in on that one. But now I made it to Ecorse Road and we're going to see where the Ecorse, they call it Ecorse River when you put it up on MapQuest. Uh, so it's an Ecorge Creek when it doesn't flood and it's a raging river when it's flooding, right? But here it goes under the Ecorse, uh, Ecorse Road. And I, I want to check, you know, after we get a one or two inch rain and just see how bad it might be. Okay, now I made it to Middle Belt. I keep backtracking. And seems pretty passive at this point, not to worry. It doesn't seem like a big thing. Now here, gate valve number three and gate valve number four. Somebody needs to explain this one to me. Those are markings, and they do mean something. So, um, and I'm not sure. Somebody, you know there's somebody that works at the airport or somebody in the government. They have pumps. They want to keep those runways clear. That water is going to drain off, and they need to get it out of there. They need those planes to land. Um, so that water's pumped out. So whether Taylor gets it or they wink, wink, uh, yeah, and Ecorse Creek doesn't get any of it. Well, you know, let's be the Downing Thomases here. Let's keep an eye on this. Uh, if we all. Uh, keep our eyes and our ears and all our senses, our wits about us. We can uh, we can see what's going on. Crap! I was a little kid and I remember on Hanover Street seeing the street flood and there would be rowboats out there and they were just having. It's like as a kid you're thinking, "Wow, that is so cool," you know. But no, it's not cool when your basement floods and whatnot. Thankfully, we moved to uh, Edgewood Street in. Uh, 67 66 or 67 here um ecorse river they call it here uh i'm getting yeah near the amazon property this was just recently built but uh folks though thanks for watching uh we'll maybe probably have something new next week Ooh, I'm on thin ice here. Thankfully, I don't weigh a ton, but this is as it goes under Vining Road. So, and then there's a couple lakes back a little bit to the west that um, just north of Wick Road, Wick and Wayne Road. 
And, but they could have a retention pond out here. Folks, thanks for watching. Uh, good night.